Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Brusa Malaysia webinar. And today we are going to talk about going tactical with warrants. Okay. My name is Shen Chu. I'm the moderator for this webinar. And with me today, we have Kenneth Chow, who is the head of sales and marketing of RHB Investment Bank today online with us to share with us how we can go more tactical with investments portfolio and strategy with this investment tool called Warrant. All right, thank you. Now, first thing first, disclaimer. Whatever we share in this <laughs> webinar is only for educational purpose. In no way that the speaker or me or Bursa Malaysia is uh, giving you any buy or sell call for any of the uh, stock. So whatever we discuss here is only for educational purpose so if you decide to buy or sell anything or you decide to trade any warrants you do it at your own risk is that okay yes. now let me uh give me great uh pleasure to introduce our speaker today i thank you so much for joining us kenneth mm -hmm. thank you Shane. all right and uh kenneth is um has joined the investment banking industry in the year of 20, 2007 just before the subprime mortgage crisis so he's in this industry for 10 over years okay and, and uh, therefore he experienced several market turbulence thereafter and started from a risk management uh, managing background he later learned to embrace risk and started a journey in the derivative space as a warren trader himself okay so he traded warrants and before he moved on to sales and marketing of these uh, structured products he's now the head of sales and marketing in the equity derivative team from a RHB Investment Bank. Okay, thank you, Kenneth, for joining us today. Thank you. Now, Kenneth, what are you going to cover uh, today with us? Okay, so today, uh, the things that I'm going to cover will be in six parts. Okay, uh, first thing first, we're going to talk about the rise of uh, demand for structural warrants. And then secondly, we talk about what are warrants, okay, what exactly are they, uh, and how does it work. And third thing, we will go to the advantages of uh, trading warrants. We move on then to warrant essentials, whereby those are the important things that you need to know before you trade warrants. And then fifth thing is how to stay ahead uh, of the game. You know, tools and basically some things that you need to know uh, well, uh, while you trade warrants. And lastly, we will finish the session with a Q and A. Uh, Q and A. Uh, if you have any questions, so I think you can ask through Shane, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So we'll do the Q and A in the last segment of. The session so why don't we start with the first one how can you tell us like uh kind of like how volatile is the market and suddenly there's a surge in the demand for warrants okay so we talk about uh riding on market volatility uh, so what does it mean by this okay uh so obviously uh if you have been following the market uh it has been a very volatile year especially last one uh, in 2018 we experienced uh, some major events like the US-China trade war, uh, Brexit, and all supply glut that uh, that caused the market uh, uh, a lot of uncertainties yeah, in the market. Yeah, precisely. Last year was a bad year for many retail investors. Yeah. So covering uh, from, from the global market's perspective, you say S&P 500 itself uh, lost also about 5% there last year. Uh, closer to Asia, Shanghai stock index, I think, suffered... Uh, more painfully, I think 27% down, and not in the slide, but uh, Hang Seng Index also lost about 12% there. And back home for Malaysia, uh, we suffer also about a 5% uh, drop in the KLCI Index. So, uh, coupled with our uncertainties internally, right, we had our general election uh, sometime in May last year. Uh, there's a lot of uh, restructuring, there's a lot of changes uh, uh, internally. We also saw some popular shares also fall uh, quite a bit, uh, like MYAG and FGV, actually half of their value uh, by end of 2018. So with all this volatility in the market, right, uh, does it mean that there's no goal for investment already? Right? This is one thing that we need to think about. So this year, especially this year in 2019, uh, we are still uncertain of the direction, right? We saw the index uh, moving up to 1,730 uh, just two months ago, and now we are still trading around uh, 1,630, right? Mm -hmm. Totally probably 1,629, I think. 
So one thing for sure going forward is perhaps the volatility. Now, so that does not uh, deter investors from coming in the market. Uh, what happened is that we saw uh, some switch uh, of investor um, from long term and more towards the short term horizon. So short term products like uh, structured warrants has been actually growing uh, quite a bit. In 2018, uh, we saw trading volume actually double right, from about 3 to 4 billion uh, a month, uh, moving on to about 10 billion on average last year. And this year, it's still uh, the demand is still very resilient. Uh, I think we are still seeing about nine to ten billion uh, uh, up until now. Mm, I see. So if we had learned warrants uh, last year during the bear market, then maybe the retail investor portfolio could be uh, enhanced, right? Maybe there are a certain hedge they can do that. Yeah, definitely, they will have more uh, options, uh, strategy, right? They will have more strategy when it comes to uh, investing once you know Warren, mm -hmm. which we will go okay. a bit more in depth later on. Mm -hmm. All right. So as I said, the uh, <coughs> the the demand for okay. Warrens uh, has been uh, spiking quite a bit. So if you are on to shares, right, or you have been trading shares, if you look into your trading, uh, uh, shares trading account or shares trading app, you will notice uh, day to day you will see uh, warrants, uh, warrants stopping the charts. And there's a lot of demands for it. In this case, you see um, <clears throat> they are they have been all uh, heavily traded uh, on this screen. And the second thing is that what you need to know is warrants are similar like shares, right? So if you go into your uh, Malaysian trading account, you will be able to trade warrants as well, and they are listed and traded in the uh, uh, just like your shares. Mm, yeah. So, Kenneth, tell us what are actually warrants? Uh? Okay, so in, in a few simple slides, I uh, will try to summarize uh, what are warrants and how does it work. Okay, okay. so let's look at this slide. A warrant actually tracks the mother share at a fraction of the price. So just like this image here, yeah, you see the small fish is actually following the big fish, where we call the big fish the mother share. And the small fish here is the warrant. So the, the big fish or the mother share is uh, typically referred to the stocks that you are looking at. So your MYG, your FGV, or RHB or Maybank shares. Yeah? But the warrants that is following the mother share, which is very dependent on the mother share's performance, actually trades at a price much lower than the share price. So in most cases, they are, or they are trading below one ringgit on Busan Malaysia. Mm. And you, if you dwell into uh, warrants, there are two types of it, right? The call warrant and the put warrant. <clears throat> Excuse me. So call warrant, it's um, it follows the uh, movement of the share price. So if the share price moves up, the call warrant will also follow in tandem. Whereas put warrant, it, it's actually moving against or in the opposite direction of the share price. If the share price goes up, your warrant actually falls in value. And to easily differentiate these two, you can look at the stock code or the description on your screen. Okay, call warren, you will end with a stock code where you see a name followed by a dash and a CA or a C12345, okay, alphabetical or it can be numerical. When do they use CA alphabet? When do they use C with numeric? So sequence. The, the stocks, um, yeah, you are right, Shane. It's actually by sequence and it's actually determined by Busa Malaysia. Oh, yeah. right. sometimes they can come up with CC or CD. Correct. So it will be first come, first serve basis when uh -huh. we apply uh, to list this kind of warrants from Busan, Malaysia, then they will put us on the on the sequence. Mm. So first come, first serve, we will be take C, and the next one will be taking D and E and F and mm. Uh, mm. so on and so forth. So if I want to trade during a bear market, I should go for warrants which end with H. Correct. So if right. you're expecting the underlying or mother share to go down, mm. then you should be looking at some put warrants where yeah. it ends with a H, dash H, A or H, H numbers. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. Okay. Now, uh, if you look back in your trading screen, yeah, we are, if you realize we focus more on call warrants here, okay? So let's look at your trading screen. Let's say if you like Gamuda, right? you type Gamuda on your trading screen, you will see not only the mother share, Right, where in this case you see mother share and then followed by usually a list of warrants. And as you can see here, 
the light blue color on the left side of the table is your warrant name and warrant code. Right. So you have Gamuna C51, C57, so on and so forth until C63. And they are typically traded much lower, cheaper than the share price. Yeah. Gamuna share price is traded now uh, you know, on this screen is actually $2.86. Uh, $2 whereas the warrants price below, if you can notice, um, one and a half cents, four and a half cents, seventeen cents, ten cents, and eleven cents. Now very, very cheap, much cheaper than the share price. Mm. Now sometimes you will also see uh, this thing called uh, company one, whereby it's similar to uh, uh, short warrants, but it's actually a, a totally different thing. Now the stock code is easily differentiated is dash W. Okay, these company warrants are actually created or actually listed by the company itself. So Gamuda company warrant is listed by Gamuda. Whereas the core warrants that we are focused on today is actually uh, all listed by the banks, typically mm -hmm. by banks. Can you share with us like what? Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I was just ask about to ask this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't excuse. Yeah, but, yeah. but so basically, what are the difference between these two things? Yeah, let me show you just a few. Okay, company warrants, first thing first, we talk about conversion to mother share. So people who trade company warrants or invest in company warrants uh, may have the intention to actually convert the uh, holdings of warrants into the mother share. So when you have a, a company warrant in your hand and then when you want you want the mother share instead, so you fill out a form and you pay the subscription fee and you will be converted to the mother share. So you, from warrants, you'll be getting mother share. Uh, typically, it also lasts a uh, it will last longer, right? Uh, both social warrants and company warrants have a limited lifespan, okay? But for company warrants, usually longer, they last from about two to five years. Whereby uh, whereby uh, the social warrants is actually a, sh a bit shorter. Now, third thing, third thing about company warrants is that they don't have a market maker. So what happened is that the price of the company warrants is actually driven pretty much by the demand and supply of it. Okay, so your trading volume, your your bit of a uh, quotes, and all these are based on the demand and supply to move the price of the company warrants. Now let's look at the things that differentiates structured warrants. Okay, first thing first, as compared to company warrants, right? Number one is uh, they are cash settled. So there won't be any conversion to uh, the mother share. So more uh, clean and simple. At the end of the uh, lifespan of the warrant, then they will be all uh, cash at all. Okay, no conversion to mother share. Second thing, they are also shorter dated. Uh, typically, they last from about six months to nine months in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, third thing, the market maker for uh, structured warrants. So all structured ones listed on Busta Malaysia has a market maker to provide uh, liquidity. Mm. So they will have to have their bid codes and offer codes uh, all the time to maintain throughout the lifespan of the warrant. So basically, the prices of this kind of uh, structured warrants is also actually in a way guided by the market maker. Mm. You don't. It doesn't mean that you have a high trading volume. Uh, the warrant will actually move in a certain direction. Okay, because the price actually follows the underlying share. That's the under that's that's the most important thing that you need to know here. But it could be different for company warrants, right? Correct. Company warrants so long that you know there are huge buy buying volume. Correct. Then the share price could be pushed up quite substantially. So can you also tell us like uh, uh what is the uh, reason that company warrants were issued and what is the reason that structural warrants were issued? What they, what were they uh, in, initially intention uh intended for? Okay, good question. So, so for it's not in this slide, but uh, since Shane asked about it, yeah, so company warrants are usually uh, it's a tool to raise uh, risk funds for companies itself. Mm. Okay, so if Kamala needs some uh, needs some funding and all, they will have some proper exercise to to issue certain kind of uh, like in this case like a company warrants mm. to obtain some funds. But for structured warrants, it's actually just for pure trading purposes. So bank will just issue warrants to facilitate traders out there for them to trade. Okay, so it's pretty much very very short term, uh, short term kind of uh, investment here. Mm, all right. So for company warrants, basically for to, to raise money, social warrants is mainly for trading purposes, lah. Huh? Correct. So that's the intention. <laughs> all right. Okay. So moving on to the next slide, where I want to talk a little bit more about the market making here. Okay. So if you look at uh, these two tables here. 
The warrant above is uh, it's a warrant without a market maker. So how you can tell it's uh, the bid offer is actually small, very very small. So if you can see, if you want to buy, let's say if you are interested in the warrant above, uh, you want to spend three thousand ringgit to invest in this uh, warrant, you can hardly fill up because on thirteen cents, yeah. Uh, on uh, at thirteen cents, you can only fill up about thousand or two thousand ringgit worth. So you will be probably taking up the next uh, offer price if you want to invest three thousand ringgit in this warrant. Okay, where else uh, at the lower table you can see this warrant uh, there is a presence of market maker. The bid and offer code is huge. Right? The volume is big, five hundred thousand on the bid and five hundred thousand on the offer. Right, despite the traded volume is small. The focus here is actually to look at the bid and offer volume of a warrant because this bid and offer volume actually determines the liquidity of the warrant, not the traded volume here. So most investors who are new to warrant will always look at the traded volume of a warrant to say that, oh, this is a good warrant because the traded volume is, uh, is huge, right? So maybe the, the, they will, something is going on, they will move the price. But for warrants, as I mentioned before, uh, what moves the price is actually the market maker's price, the bid and offer. So a good market maker will ensure that this warrant will actually follow the share price movement. Mm. So the first table, is it like company warrants kind of movement? Then the second table is like a structural warrants kind of movement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perhaps, yeah, perhaps. Company warrants, uh, demand and supply may not always be there. So sometimes when the demand and supply dries up, it's probably uh, something you can see up there on, on the first okay. table. Okay, yeah. so right now we've covered more about uh, uh, what are warrants, uh, what is liquidity, and then so the, the point I get from this slide is that volume is not the main factor. It's the liquidity that's the main factor, right? Correct. And to see how many, uh, how much is the volume and the bid, and how much is the volume and offer. This liquidity will means a lot more to structure warrants. Correct. Trade. So for Sorry. warrants, the uh, in, in just to sum up what Shane has mentioned, the trading vo the trader volume of a warrant does not equals to liquidity of a warrant. So it's, you always look at the bid and offer yeah. for uh, yes. volume. Okay, so we have covered about trading volume. Can you tell us like what are the advantages of trading uh, structural warrants? Okay, uh, I will cover that in the next slide. But yeah. just before I go to yeah. that, one more thing I want to to mention here is that something to look at is also the bid offer spread uh, of of the warrant. Right. So with market maker, the spread is always uh, tight. So in this case, just say on the table below, twelve cents and twelve and a half. These are the tightest spread that we can go. Where else, uh, one without a market maker, you will see probably a very wide spread. In this case, twelve cents and to jump two ticks away and 13 cents is the offer. So if you want to, if you have invested in this kind of warrants, you bought at 13 cents, you want to sell back at 12 cents, you will suffer uh, uh, lose larger, yeah, you, yeah. you lose another tick there. Okay. Yeah, because uh, without a market maker is the, the, the market participants. Correct. Uh, which is driven by the market force, right? Correct. The supply and demand. Correct. If a market maker is, you just strictly follow the, the, the price matrix, right? That's Correct. what we call it. Right? Correct. We shall tell next. Okay, so what are the advantages of trading warrants? Okay, so there, there are actually a couple of advantages here when you trade warrants, right? Uh, so let's go into the first one here. Now, the first thing here you see is actually the share price movement uh, versus the core warrant Supermax C37 movement here. Now, this chart uh, has been taken off uh, last year where the growth uh, industry actually enjoyed quite a, a run there. Last year, when we see the strengthening of the US dollars, exporters like Supermax actually uh, gained quite a bit. So the share price of Supermax actually moved uh, from uh, 106 to 3 ringgit and 22, uh, as you can see on uh, the table, the light blue table, and actually gained about 52% there in the period of uh, early Feb to May. Yeah? And within the same period, right, Warren investors uh, of uh, Supermax CA37 actually uh, made 320% uh, within the same time frame. So this percentage gain here is actually also uh, represented or amplified by this thing called the effective gearing. Okay, So you have this leveraging effect when you trade warrants. And 320% gain in the warrant versus the share price of 52% uh, is actually 6.1 times uh, in terms of effective curing. 
this is this can be represented by the number you can see uh, on the top right hand of your screen so every warrant has a different effective gearing so it depends on which one you trade you need to look at this thing mm, okay i see so that's number one now uh, it's a leverage yeah. effect this is also the most important uh, reason why investors actually like warrants like, yeah. for the leveraging but, effect but, but likewise uh, if the, the the thing did not go according to our directions <laughs> yes. so our losses can also be amplified right correct change is yeah. actually right uh, yeah. our cover also in, in the later side how how it can actually work uh, the other way but definitely uh, it's actually high risk high return mm. product uh, warrants okay so next uh, advantage mm -hmm. that uh, on for warrants trading is this because of the leveraging effect you don't need uh, the uh, such a high capital to get the same kind of potential returns okay the example here shown is actually using Genting Malaysia right uh, you can see last year and uh, Genting Malaysia, if you have invested 10,000 uh, in Genting Malaysia this period, within the December period, up 10%, you would have made 1,000 ringgit. Okay? Whereby, if you have, uh, if you know warrants, all right, you want to invest in, in warrants, you don't need to fork up the same amount of money, 10,000 ringgit, you need only to fork up 2,500 ringgit to get the same kind of profit of 1,000 ringgit. And this is because also of the effective gearing. As you can see on the right hand side of the screen, the warrant here offers an effective gearing of four times. That's why when the share price of Genting Malaysia moved up by 10%, the warrant Genting Malaysia C43 went up by 40%. And hence, even with a lower capital, we can give you this, the kind of uh, similar profit. Mm, well, all right. Okay. Now, the, the, the third thing about a uh, advantage of uh, trading warrants is this not only you can actually participate uh, in the local share uh, warrants warrants listed on Malaysia in Bursa Malaysia can also allow you to gain exposure to foreign shares so the example here if, if you can see on your trading screen again right these warrants are actually quoted and traded in Ringgit Malaysia but the mother share here is actually all shares from the Hong Kong exchange the Bank of China, Country Garden, China Mobile, the yeah, China A50, uh, Gili Mobile here, uh, sorry, Gili, uh, the Gili uh, the Mobile, uh, Hong Kong Exchange, ICBC, Tencent, and Xiaomi. These are all, uh, you can also now trade them via the warrants listed on Busa Malaysia. So the movement also follow the underlying shares uh, in Hong Kong. Correct. Mm. So the movement also trades, uh, tracks the other share that is listed in Hong Kong. Okay. So uh, the thing that we talk about that is like they say for example Tencent, right? Same thing similarly, uh, Tencent uh, who is listed in uh, Hong Kong, you can also trade Tencent C, they say C7 back then for the exposure to the share. So the share price went up by 43% uh, during, the, uh, during October to March and then the warrants actually moved up by 95%. Same thing, this is also 2.2 uh, 2 .2 times more than the share price movement, which is also indicated by the effective carrying uh, mm -hmm. ratio of that. Okay, and one thing about uh, warrants trading, also one advantage about warrants trading is this, warrants are also is, uh, already a cheap tool to trade, right? So your transaction costs for warrants are typically lower than shares. Now, if you trade warrants uh, now, or actually for for three years starting from 2018, this uh, transaction cost is even lower because of the waiver of the stamp duties for three years starting from 2018 January all the way to uh, tw at the end of 2020. So yeah, just just an example on how much uh, you could have saved is this stamp duty costs about 0.01 percent, or actually 10 ringgit for every 10,000 trade that you do. So if you do a two-way trade, you will probably save about 20 ringgit there already. So if you are a day trader, or if you trade very often, uh, there's some amount to uh, to think about. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, so before we go to uh, the warrants essentials, just let us uh, launch a poll to see if you have been listening. Okay. So let me launch a poll right now on your screen. You will see that's a poll question. So they ask you which of the following is not 
an advantage to trade warrants. All right, please pick the right answer. I'll give you another 20 seconds. All right, is it leverage? Is it low investment outlay? Is it high transaction cost? Or is it exposure to foreign underlyings? All right, 70% of you have voted. So let me just close the poll and share the result with you. So on your screen, you see that 1% of you choose leverage, 0% of you choose, uh, none of you choose low investment outlay, 96% of you choose high transaction cost, and 3% of you choose exposure to foreign underlying. So Kenneth, which one is the right answer? So the right answer here is, not an advantage to trade warrants is definitely a high transaction cost. So 96% of you got it right. It's majority yeah. got it right. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah. So for the four percent of you, you have to pay more attention in class. Okay. Yeah. You can call me afterwards. <laughs> uh, he will make sure that you get hundred marks after this. So now, so right now we have talked about what are warrants, the market volatility, and the uh, advantage of trading warrants. So can you tell us when it comes to trading warrants, what are the three things that we need to master? Okay, so now we come about the things that we need to uh, look after. Some of you may be confused by the things that uh, that you come across to say like strike price, uh, exercise ratio, different maturity, effective gearing, what what so what not. But don't worry about it. The most important thing that when you come uh, to Warren is these three things. It all boils down to these three things only. Okay, now first thing first is sensitivity. Second thing, effective gearing, and third thing, time value. So in short, we call it the set. So are you set? Okay, one, two, three, SET. So sensitivity, uh, sensitivity basically tells you how fast the warrant move, effective gearing, how much the warrant move, and how long the warrant lasts uh, when it comes to time value. So these three things is the thing that uh, you must uh, understand before you trade uh, warrants. Okay, so let's, let's uh, move on to sensitivity, the first uh, part of the SET. Now, as sensitivity basically tells you how quick right, a warrant actually reacts or how responsive a warrant reacts. And different warrants actually behave differently in the sense that different warrants actually move in a different speed. Okay, I'm taking two examples here to give you a better understanding on, on what it means by this. Okay, here are two price matrix uh, which shows you the different warrant price, okay, uh, in according to the different level of the underlying share price. Okay, two warrants. The share price of the underlying is the same, definitely. But for the warren price, as you can see, there are different color to tell you, different boxes to tell you that how long the warren price will stay before it actually changes to the next. Now, let's zoom in to the left table here, Supermax C60. Okay, if, you, uh, if the share price uh, was at 1 ringgit and 47 cents, Okay, you were bullish and you got into the warren, you bought the warren itself. Okay, so you bought at three and a half cents on the right side of the table. You can see, right, three and a half cents. Now, how long would it take before you can actually sell your warren and realize a profit, right? So here you can see if you bought at the lowest range of uh, three and a half cents, the warrens will have to move five ticks or five steps before you can actually sell to the next level at four cents before you can make a profit, right? So you can see here from one ringgit and 47 cents on the share price, the share price have to move to 148, 149, 150, 151, 152 before your warrant will flick to the next uh, bid price of, of four cents. Okay, this five steps here movement is also equivalent to a 3.4% uh, move in the share price before the warren will move by 14.3%, okay, as, uh, as shown in the lower table here. So if the share price move only 2% or move only 2.5%, the warren price will not be moving. Okay, only anything above 3.4% or 3.4, the warren will have to move one step which will show a 14.3% uh, move. 
upside upside move okay now this is a relatively uh, insensitive uh, warrant now, if you want something more sensitive, okay, something that moves faster, this is how it looks like. Okay, same thing. The share price is still at the same level, one four seven, okay. But the warrant price here is actually nine and a half because this is a different warrant, right? This is a Supermax C sixty five. So for for you to uh, make a profit from this warrant, you will need to wait for the warrant to move actually three ticks here. It's lesser than the previous five ticks. So the share price must move from 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, but at 1.50, you are able to already sell back your ones and make a profit here. So these three steps here is actually equivalent to about 2% move in the share price or about 5.3% move uh, in the Warren changes. So anything above 2% already, you will see the Warren price moving and you are able to uh, make a profit from it. So whereas the earlier example, you need to wait for it to move about 3.4%. This is actually faster. Okay. So are there any warrants which are uh, very sensitive? Like if the underlying move one tick, they also move one tick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think some people uh, like that. Yes, there is warrants like this. Uh, but sometimes uh, we will say that it lose the uh, meaning of buying a warrant. Because why, when you buy warrants, you want the leverage effect. You want the effective gearing effect. So let's say in this case also, if you can see, uh, yes, it's, this is this warrant here, C65 is more sensitive, but the move here now will only make you about 5.3%, right? But whereas the earlier example, one, once the warrant price move, right? When there's a change in warrant price, the return is already 14.3%. Uh, 14, 14, 14 so a more sensitive warrants, typically the effective gearing is actually lower. Oh, lower. I see. Yeah. So if you want, so it really depends on what kind of uh, investors you are, which I will cover later on on how you can actually uh, choose your type of warrants. Mm. Okay. okay. Right. So this is uh, sensitivity. The next thing I want to talk about is actually the effective gearing. The second part to uh, the SET set, right? E stands for effective gearing. So basically what it does is actually like a performance multiplier here which I covered earlier on in the benefit of uh, uh, trading warrants, right? Of the leveraging effect. But how much how much is the leveraging effect? You can actually look at the effective gearing. Now, uh, in this example, I, have, I use FGV. Uh, it's quite recently quite uh, quite hot, right? Because early of the month, when the news about the renegotiation of the ECRL, uh, news was about FG, uh, about the the package actually includes China buying more palm oil from Malaysia. So FGV uh, price also rallied quite a bit. Uh, on the day itself, uh, on uh, this is on the 9th April, share price was up about 2, 2.4%. And the warrants actually move uh, more, right? Uh, always on the leveraging effect. So in this case, C62 actually uh, was up by 11% and C63 up about 5% here. Now, both are also FGV warrants, but they, the, the, the uh, quantum that they move is actually different. So C62 here actually moved 4.6 times off the share price movement. So share price moved 2.4, it moved 11%, right? Whereby C63 only moved 2.2 times off the share price here. So this thing, this thing that uh, determines the multiplier here is called the effective gearing, which, uh, which is the uh, leveraging effect mm. uh, ratio. Lah. Okay. Now, uh, this is what Shane uh, mentioned earlier on. Now, warrants is always a, a high risk, high return uh, investment. Okay? You can make a lot from it with low capital, but you can also potentially lose uh, a lot. Now, what, it meant, what I meant is uh, this, because effective gearing also works when, when, you, uh, when the market is moving against you. So in this case, like MYG fell 0.6% uh, here. Uh, relatively small change uh, on the day, but because of the warrants effective gearing here, you see like warrants like uh, MYG C67 losing about 4% uh, on the same day. Okay, so one thing uh, one thing you need to know, right, although you are also uh, uh, exposed to this kind of downside risk, one thing about warrant is that we say that warrants have uh, the losses of, of warrant investment is actually cap. Now, what I meant by this is this. 
this is the uh, snapshot or the share price movement uh, taken last year after before and after the general election so you know as you know the counters that is related to the previous government after the election uh, they tank quite a bit okay due to uh, uncertainties so in just in the May, uh, in the uh, month of our election last year may MIG lost about 70 percent there okay so buy right if you look at the effective gearing if you remember what i said earlier this is supposed to be the multiplier right 6.1 times multiplied by 70 percent down you would have get about 400 over percent uh, loss but it, for warrants trading there won't be a case where you face an over loss meaning your capital at most you will only lose your capital nothing more than your capital Okay, so on the upside, you get to enjoy uh, unlimited upside. And on the downside, you are kept by the capital of the warrant. Okay, now moving on to the next, uh, the third thing about uh, the SET. T stands for time value. Now, all warrants have a limited lifespan. So it does not last forever, okay? So if you can see the specs of uh, each warrant, they have their own respective uh, expiry dates. So because of this, a uh, warrant has a limited lifespan. The time factor in a warrant is actually very valuable. And this time factor here, we call it the time value. Now, the moment a warrant is listed, uh, time value at, is at, it, at its highest, of course, because, uh, because of the uh, remaining time to maturity is very long but as we move closer to its uh, expiry date and maturity date time value actually diminishes and not at a constant speed uh, in the beginning of the life of a warrant time value actually falls slower and as you close uh, on to the maturity date the uh, time value actually drops even faster and fastest uh, towards and when you are closest or last two months before the expiry. Okay, so the next question is, uh, if you uh, hold a warrant towards the end of uh, the maturity date, do you lose everything? Since time value will diminish and towards the end, it will become zero, right? You will zero rise. So would you lose everything? It depends. This thing is because Warrant price is uh, made out of two main components. One is intrinsic value and one is time value. While time value will be uh, diminished or will be zero rise towards the end of the lifespan, but the next thing you need to determine or need to know if you are getting back anything is based on the intrinsic value of the warrant. Okay, so when you when the warrant is uh, alive, when you are trading, there's some time value to it, and towards the end expire. The what's left is just your intrinsic value. And how you get this intrinsic value is simple. Just your current share price and you need to minus off the strike price here. So the differences is actually your intrinsic value. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even if time is gone, uh, at the end of the maturity date, your intrinsic value is 30 cents, you will get back uh, 30 cents. Here with the assumption of uh, the ratio is actually one to one. If you so some ones have a certain kind of uh, conversion ratio, so you just need to divide this intrinsic value or the settlement uh, intrinsic value by the ratio, and you know what you will get back for each of the warrants that you have on hand. So let's say it's a three to one now. So in this case, what is the intrinsic value? So ten cent, uh? yeah, it's correct. It's mm -hmm. ten cent actually. So if you have three to one ratio, at the end of the day, you find the intrinsic value thirty cents divided by three. Each one you get back ten cents. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay, so we're coming back to the three things that we covered earlier on. Uh, the SET, these are the things that you need to know when you trade warrants, right? Now, these three things actually will tell you like what kind of uh, investors you are, you need to uh, focus on certain uh, segment of it. Now, the first one, sensitivity, right? If you are a day trader, you like to trade in and out very fast uh, in a single day. So something that might favor you is probably a, a very sensitive word, right? Because very quickly you can go in, go in uh, take the profit and get out in the same day, right? Uh, something less sensitive will will, will uh, it's very tough for you to actually make, make any profit from it uh, in a single day. Now, if you are a risk taker, 
Yeah, you right to use a small capital or a very small kind of investment outlay to make a big, a bigger kind of potential returns. Then you you'll be looking for something that is very high in terms of effective gearing. Okay, of course, just remember high high risk high return. Yeah, higher effective gearing than the higher the higher potential gain and loss. Now the third one is I would say it's more suitable for speculators, but investors or speculators. Uh, on uh, on news especially if you expect something to happen in one month time or two months time uh, when the, before the news to be announced you want to trade this kind of warrants uh, make sure that your warrant has uh, enough uh, time before it, uh, it expires as you can remember time value uh, will diminish uh, over time and it's actually faster towards the maturity okay so depend depending on what kind of investors you are you pick uh, the right one Okay. Now, so now you know how what what is warrants uh, what are warrants are uh, the advantage of it and and basically the essential of it. Now, I just want to share a few things uh, tools, uh, so to help your warrant trading experience. Okay, first thing I want to introduce to you uh, is this thing called the time based stop loss. Uh, probably a lot of you uh, heard about stop loss about cutting your losses. But time-based stop loss is actually something uh, you don't come uh, across quite often. Uh, it's it's what I use when I trade one uh, last time. Okay, so this is how uh, it, it is uh, used. Okay, now imagine if you are entering a trade. There's only three possible scenarios that you will end up with. Now, first scenario, the black box on your left. Yeah, price move in your favor. Of course, this is the happiest scenario, right? You want to just manage your profit. Just determine when you want to exit and and uh, so on and so forth. The second scenario, if price move against you, okay, you are making losses. So the next thing, the next uh, sensible thing to do is actually cut loss. So why? Because he said you don't want to wait for the full loss if the momentum is against you. Okay, Makes sense. And the third scenario is that nothing happens. Okay, when you are uh, when you are, let's say you are bullish and you enter into a trade, but after a while, nothing really happens. So here, what happens is if the trade doesn't uh, doesn't pan out, it doesn't happen, right? If uh, what you have, it doesn't happen uh, uh, on what you expect it to be, so you might be wrong. So here, for me as a trader back then, I used this thing called time time big stop loss to say that if nothing happens uh, by the eight candlestick. When, last time when I trade, I use charts, right? So eight candlestick, I will actually cut my losses. I will, I will exit the trade. And then I will re-strategize and replan my, mm -hmm. my next entry. Mm -hmm. So this is something uh, very relevant, especially when it comes to warrant trading because uh, time value actually uh, falls, right? Over time. So this is this is something that may, you may be able to use when you trade them. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next thing is, uh, these are notification on uh, new warrant listing expiries, right? I think a couple of uh, issuers out there actually send newsletters out uh, to, to warrant investors. So what happened is that, as I said, right, time value uh, is actually a, quite an important factor in, in warrants trading, right? A part of your SET. Now, new warrants, the good thing about new warrant listing is that you have a lot of time value, right? But if you list a new warrant, the time value is the highest then so in a way time value actually falls the slowest when you are actually uh, trading or investing in a new warren so it's really good to know uh, what are the latest listing out there in the market and uh, also sometimes you even have uh, IPO stocks right that, uh, that warrants, uh, warrants haven't listed before so first you so you will have uh, able to get the first hand news on all these uh, new warrants and uh, also warrants expiring the the um, this uh, because sometimes some investors uh, may forget about their warrants holding. So what we do or what basically some uh, some issuers do actually they actually remind investors to say that hey you know there are actually warrants expiring soon. So make sure that uh, these are these are not in your hands and uh, hopefully you haven't forgotten about your position. Okay, these are very good things to to have that help you trade and open up your options in the warrant trading. And next thing is actually uh, uh, 
uh, also day to day, uh, some also some issues also actually send out uh, newsletters to say that you know, uh, today this uh, this is hot in the news, right? Uh, they say to uh, Toto is hot in the news because of uh, certain kind of news. Uh, warrant issuers usually pay uh, uh, relevant warrant to this kind of news, so for you to consider. So straight away you know something is going on, and if you are keen, you can actually consider the warrants. And sometimes uh, they also put in like a research uh, from their in-house uh, team, their other colleagues, right? To say that oh, if this research shows uh, some bullish signal in the in the stock, so something that you may consider is actually uh, the warrant as well. Okay, these are all very uh, good things. And it's typically, I think most of them are actually free now. All this, all this will come in handy for you. Of course, uh, on the left hand side is the price matrix that I used to show earlier on on how uh, how sensitivity works, and this will actually tells you uh, this tell you uh, the warrant price uh, that is so we make it very transparent in terms of uh, warrants trading, and uh, in terms of the sensitivity you are able to tell uh, you are able to tell uh, and uh, there are always educational pieces by issuers out there to actually. Uh, to educate uh, investors more on about warrants uh, from time to time. Uh, of course, uh, for for foreign listing uh, uh, warrants also, you, for, through all these newsletter, you are able to pick up uh, news and uh, what what is really uh, hot in even for other um, stocks in other country. Okay, so for those who are actually. Uh, Interested to trade on foreign uh, foreign counter warrants like your Xiaomi or Tencent or Gili, just need to make sure one thing that the uh, trading hours or the market making hours is actually a bit different from Busa uh, normal UG hours because the uh, underlying that is listed in Hong Kong actually starts later and ends earlier. So it starts at nine thirty as compared to Malaysian stock market they start at nine and they end actually at four pm, uh, whereby Malaysia ends at actually about five pm. Okay. Okay, so for those who are also still very keen on learning uh, more apart from warrants, if you want to learn anything more, you can always uh, head on to Busa Marketplace where they have uh, other kind of uh, educational series for you to always click on. I think most of them are, are free, I think. Yeah, Yeah. for the, if organized by Busa Malaysia, most uh, seminar or webinar are free or only of, of minimal cost. Lah. Yeah, then okay. yeah, so and, better. Uh, yeah, for example, you can enroll for the next one, which is a BMD Educational Futures webinar happening uh, two days later. You can go to Bursa uh, Marketplace to register for our futures webinar. So that's one. And on Bursa Marketplace, they also have a warrant screener. Am I right? Yes. They yeah, are. they also have a warrant screener. You can use uh, their warrant screener on Bursa Marketplace. Yeah. You can always check out Bursa Marketplace uh, website to see on all these. Uh, uh, it's a very informative website and more than that okay so they also have uh, other uh, educational content for you if you want to learn more about the stock market about warrants uh, there's other interesting topics uh, just for you to find out yeah and they also have uh, uh, educational content on warrants you see on your on your screen there's uh, warrants uh, articles and you can also learn more from uh, Bursa Marketplace Right, so uh, yeah, today we have come to the Q and A sessions because I expect there are, there are already a lot of questions on my screen right now. <laughs> okay. So yeah, before we launch the before we go to a Q and A session, let me launch another poll. Okay, so on your screen right now, please tell us which of the following codes is a call warrant. All right, please uh, just check whether you are paying attention or not. <laughs> Which of the following codes is a call warrant? Is it C A? Is it W B or is it H A? Twenty second. Also, yeah. is it? <laughs> <laughs> Give you another ten seconds. <clears throat> so while you're answering the poll, if any questions, please write in the questions box. So our speaker Kenneth will help to answer your questions and remember write your questions in full sentences okay because if you write in shorthand maybe we couldn't understand you 
All right, so over 70% of you have voted. Let me just close and share the poll result with you. 89% of you picked number one, C8. 9% of you picked WB. And 3% of you picked pick HA. So, kind of, what is the right answer? The right answer is C8. C8. So majority. so, majority of you got it right. So, the other maybe 12% of you need to pay more attention <laughs> in class. So, what, what is WB? Uh? Okay, so W uh, uh, is actually company warrants. So, just remember anything to do with W uh, is actually for company warrants. And uh, HA is actually, or anything to start with H is actually put yeah. warrants. So, HA is a put warrant. So, all right, are there many put warrants in Malaysia? There's not a lot of uh, put warrants uh, in Malaysia. So majority, it's actually still uh, call warrants here. Yeah, but, but there are, huh? there are yeah, uh, put warrants. Are, uh, just are. that the majority are still the call warrants. Correct. And also the company warrants. All right. All right. So uh, let's go to the question and answer sessions. All right. So on my screen right now, the first question is, what is the difference between company warrants and rights issues? <laughs> this is not in my uh, expertise. I think this time we can take it further. I take it with oh, someone else. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. But uh, but uh, company warrants and uh, company warrants and rights issue are both uh, the a channel for them to raise fund. Yeah. Okay, but depending True. on which chan, uh, what is the reason they want to issue warrants and what is the reason they want to uh, issue uh, rights issue. Okay, so the next question is what. Tactics are recommended to trade uh, HSI warrants. Okay, what area or aspect of HSI should I look into? What tactics are uh, recommended to trade? Trade the Hang, Hang, Hang Seng Index warrants. What uh, so when, when someone trade Hang Seng warrants, uh, what are things aspect that uh, they should look at? Um. Okay. I mean, I think based on my experience, Hang Seng warrants are very volatile. So it's very important for you to know your stop loss. When, uh, where, where is your cut loss point? The moment you enter the trade, you must know clearly uh, when are you, where's your stop loss point? Because it can move a lot in a single day. And even if you hold uh, overnight or hold over the week, uh, you can imagine the, the, the movement or the changes in the warrant price. I think stop loss or your cut loss point is very important. Okay, so now for company warrants, uh, if we buy the warrants, how how can it be converted to actual share? So this is the question. <laughs> okay, com uh, company warrants is is not not into this topic. So I'm focused on structured warrants. But uh, on company warrants, if you really want, you can actually ask your broker. They will know how to uh, convert it convert to them for you. Yeah, uh, you need to right. fill up some forms. Uh -huh. You need to uh, pay the subscription fees and all. Okay, so on your um, so just now you mentioned about uh, market maker, right, Kenneth? So can you tell us who, who are the market makers? Okay, so uh, in Malaysia there are I think six uh, six market makers or six warrant issuers uh, now, uh, RHB, uh, Maybank, CIMB, Kenanga, Macquarie, and M Bank. Six of six of them are warrant issuers. So. Yeah, can, can you tell us what are issuers and what are market makers? Like, okay. What are, what are the roles? Ah, okay, okay, my bad. So, basically, uh, the person who created this product or these warrants are the issuers. They issue this product. And uh, more often than not, the issuers themselves are the market makers. They provide the liquidity uh, to their warrants that they issue. So, issuers and market makers are the same person in, in so far in, in all cases. Uh. So in other words, when you buy warrants, you buy from the issuer, and when you sell warrants, you also sell to the issuer. Correct. Okay, so, so that's what of, it means. Yeah, correct. Most of the time. So they are the ones who, who give the liquidity, they provide the liquidity to the market so that there are people buying, you can buy from and you can sell to. Correct. Okay, so that's that what it means by market maker. So just remember, the issuers themselves are the market makers. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the market makers for their own Warrants that the issue. Correct. Okay. Right. And just remember, structural warrants are issued by investment banks, while uh, company warrants are issued by the company itself. Correct. Okay. So the next question is for structural warrants, is the brokerage are the brokerage fees similar to company shares? Brokerage fee. Yes. Uh, brokerage fee for yes, brokerage fees is the same. 
So if yeah. I buy structural warrants, I pay the same amount of fee. When I buy shares, yeah. okay, if it's zero point four two percent, zero point four two percent. Correct. Okay. So the fee is uh, similar. So the next question is: uh, uh, the structural warrants have a limited supply, like shares in the company. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, structural warrants also has limited uh, inventory as per se, yes. When we choose to issue a warrant out there, there is already a specific or limited amount of that warrant in the market. Mm -hmm. So to, to say that uh, if I issue Supermax C60, uh, upfront you will know how many uh, Supermax C60 uh, is in the market now, or it's actually created. So usually it's about 40 to 60 million units uh, per warrant. Uh, 60 to 40 to 60 40. million units of usually uh, yeah, usually sure will pick this amount. Well, why, why is this 60 to for, 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 why, why is this uh, okay so why this amount is because uh, we we need to when we apply to busa for this kind of creation and listing we need to have a minimum amount of uh, 5 million worth of uh, warrants uh, when we create uh, when we create them so based on calculation and uh, based on uh, legacy usually typically issuers will will uh, set their amount about 40 to 50 million as a base and then they will work around this amount mm. this all right amount units i actually learned before that uh, when the structured words is fully subscribed fully subscribed uh, that means um, you finish selling oh uh, okay okay, okay. That, that scenario is when you, it gets a bit tricky, right? Yes. Yeah, can, can you tell us what we need to be careful of when okay. the social words are fully subscribed? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so it's good that uh, Shane brought this up. So, uh, as I said, so some your warrants has a limited kind of uh, inventory. Let's say 40 million, uh, for example. So 40 million units after selling the market, uh, uh, all of this 40 million, what happened is that the issuers or the market makers won't have enough uh, warrant to provide liquidity any, any, uh, anymore. So after the point of uh, selling out their warrants, the bid and offer codes and prices are actually more or less determined by the uh, investors themselves. Because the warrant issuers has no longer has enough uh, quantity or liquidity to actually provide liquidity already. Everything is driven by the market. It's more or less the demand supply of the uh, of, of the market okay. so does that mean the risk is higher where it is fully subscribed? so yes so the risk is uh, actually higher if you buy into this kind of funds why because uh, if it's purely uh, driven by this demand and supply what happens is there's a risk that this kind of bonds may be actually pushed up or may be inflated by other investors in the market so say uh, for a market maker, I think I always market make at a fair price, right? I always provide my bid and offer uh, based on a fair price. If my fair price is at 12 cents today, right? But because I don't have the quantity, I cannot market make at 12 cents. Uh, the the investors outside may be pushing up this warrant uh, price to uh, say 14 or 15 cents. And they will be trading around that region. Whereby the investor, uh, the issuer or the market maker it's only actually providing a fair price at 12 cents. So if you come in late uh, in, this in this scenario, you'll be buying at the price that is way above or way above the fair price of the issuer at the 15 cents. As compared, if you buy directly from me earlier on, it would have been only 12 cents. So when it comes to this kind of scenario, when you see a warrant, uh, if you notice a warrant uh, is sold out, you are better off looking at other warrants in the market. Because there are always uh, another one out there for you. There are six hundred over warrants uh, as we speak now. So after you, after the shares are fully taken up by uh, uh, by the investor, but if the investor want to sell it back to you, you will you buy it back? Since yes. your market So even uh, even if the one it has been fully sold out, what happened is that the issuer cannot offer you cannot uh, provide the offer side of the liquidity. But what happened is uh, a good issuer always maintain the bid side of the uh, liquidity okay. so they are willing to always buy back at the fair price still okay. no worries just that they can't sell anymore yeah, yeah. so uh, the the big price is real but the offer price is provided by the investor themselves by the market yeah but the big price may be buried below the market price so if uh, because market, people already push it out yes correct. Ah, okay. so that's the risk that if you go in late 
to All trade right, with so, so how do we know if a warrant is already fully subscribed? Okay, so uh, for I think for most issuers, they will actually make announcement or they will try to send out emails or like through newsletter, they will remind you to say that, you know, this certain warrant has been sold out. So you can consider other warrants. Hmm. So the next question is, does uh, implied effective gearing work if the warrants are uh, held lo over a longer period of time? Uh, okay, also the, okay. Uh, effective gearing. Will you still maintain the same effective if I buy and sell? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, effective gearing is is is, is always there. It's just that uh, the it may vary uh, according to time and according to different level of the the mother share. So at different point, a different uh, a different point of uh, investment horizon, your know, effective gearing will be different. So just say if your share price uh, is now higher than before. Have moved up quite a bit. Your effective gearing typically should be actually smaller. So whereby if the share price is actually trading uh, lower than before, it fall fall quite a bit. Your current effective gearing should be actually higher than uh, earlier. So different point of time, different share level, you have a different kind of effective gearing. So the effective gearing is only an estimate, like it may not be that accurate right? it will be at the point of time oh. that is the effective gearing but tomorrow if the share price changes then you have an, another effective gearing also oh, effective gearing keep changing correct ah, all right correct based on the how, how much is underlying and what correct. is the warrant price. correct okay so now is is warrant like is warrant an option um is warrant an option yes i would say warrant is like an option but uh, uh, uh warrant is like an option down into a smaller piece and it's actually uh, traded on the exchange mm -hmm. whereby sometimes options uh, options are usually traded more uh, usually refers to a more expensive and sometimes may not even be uh, exchange traded they may they may be options done uh, OTC off market trading so for for warrants is uh, they, re they behave somewhat similar to option but they are actually broken down into smaller pieces uh, using the uh, conversion ratio. Mm, okay. So, uh, do you advise retail investor to hold warrants on a longer time frame? So, uh, whether to hold a longer time frame is actually definitely up to you and depends on your strategy. But uh, typically, it shouldn't be too long. It always, it, at the end of the day, it's still a short term investment tool. Need to you need to limit your uh, holding period. I think so. You say you are saying that warrants should not be for a long period. Huh? Yeah, it's definitely not for a buy and hold yeah. kind of strategy. So if you adore Warren Buffett and you want to practice this kind of trading strategy, it's definitely not why you're using warrants. Also, not for company warrants. Uh, company warrants uh is a bit different. It's a bit tricky here. It actually behaves like a core war a structure warrant, but because the lifespan of it is actually longer last from two to five years so your time value is actually uh, more there yeah. yeah so so your set will also work on company words right um but it's similar but the thing is with set is that because you have a lot of options in a, a lot of uh, variety in the market you can use set to actually help you filter but for company ones typically it's only one or two company ones on the same mothership yeah mothership Nothing much for you to choose from. Okay, now the, the next question is a bit more uh, interesting. So, if for a company warrants from foreign market, so let's say Hong Kong, okay, uh, if after expiry, am I still able to convert to mother share without a foreign trading account? For company war, <laughs> this I I'm not an expert for uh, in this area, so I I can't really share here. Oh, okay, okay. Like, 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 Maybe she yeah. has some experience. To no, share. no, no, no. I never <laughs> Company wants for overseas. I don't. I don't really know. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, okay. Let me see. Uh. is there a centralized platform for us to observe a uh, warrant metrics? Uh, no. Unfortunately, um, uh, typically the warrant metrics is only provided by the issuer themselves on their own warrants. So only the issuers who issued that warrant itself will have the matrix on the warrant. So different issuers have different uh, matrix for their own one. So there's none, uh, huh? so they, they need to check mm. with. So they need to know like, uh, if you want to buy, uh, let's say uh, Supermax C60, you need to check with who is the issuer of yeah. C60 and need contact to check. them. Yeah, and they get a price matrix. 
okay yeah yeah for uh, for the question just now i guess you need to have a foreign trading account before you can hold the shares uh <laughs> you definitely need to have a foreign trading account. yeah definitely you, i yeah. think i think so yeah. so <clears throat> how, how do we get the information for to understand the s part of the warrants that's the next question okay so uh, what you can do is actually you can actually contact the issuer to ask them about the uh, if there's a price matrix and they should be able to share with you. So the sensitivity comes from uh, understanding the, the price uh, in the price metric, right? Correct. So to know the sensitivity, you must definitely get the price metric from the issuer. Yeah. So that is for the structure warrants. For company warrants, no price metric. <laughs> <laughs> no price metric. Uh, uh, company <laughs> warrants, the sensitivity is determined <laughs> by uh, the market. The flow. market. Yeah. So it's all demand <laughs> supply play out there. Yeah. So can you help us compare the relationship between sensitivity and effective bearing? Okay, so uh, it's actually uh, two different things. So as I mentioned before, if you are looking for something that is sensitive, usually the payoff is actually effective bearing. So if you want something more sensitive, usually the effective bearing is lower. So if you want something with a uh, high effective bearing, you have to probably bear with something that is uh, less sensitive. So there's no very sensitive and very effective bearing. <laughs> I haven't cast my cards before. I haven't cast my cards before. Let me design something if I can. <laughs> so is there a website that lists all the warrants by different issuers and maybe the expiry date for us to do comparison? Uh, yes. Uh, I think uh, I think most of the issuers have, have their own warrant website, but they will also include uh, warrants from other issuers as well for you to make comparison. Mm, okay, so the next question is, if a warrant comes to expiry date, will it be automatically cash settled? If it's automatic cash settled, will brokerage fee be charged like when we sell the warrants? Okay, uh, okay. so uh, for structural warrants, most cases it will be cash settled. I say, okay, so far all, it will be cash settled. So as it, because it's cash settled, there will be no more selling in the market. So there won't be any brokerage fees charged. But sometimes uh, some issues may charge you on the uh, exercise fee, but it's very minimal. Typically, I think point point one, no, I think point three percent, point three percent, or else it's free also. There's no brokerage fees charge. No worries. Uh, because you're not selling the warrants, yeah. So if you let it, uh, if you let it wait until the expiry date, you will only be charged the maybe conversion fee, lah. Huh? Correct. All right. So the next question is, what time frame? Would you use when you mentioned about eight candlestick as like time based stop loss? <laughs> okay, this is more to trading kind of thing, but uh, don't mind sharing. Back then, I for for Malaysian stocks, I use an hourly chart, so it's actually uh, eight uh, after eight hours for cut loss. Eight if, hours, like you yeah. trade intraday, lah. Uh, yeah, intraday. No, intraday uh, can be overnight also. Yeah, yeah, overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll trade overnight. overnight. I only maybe one day, only six. <laughs> <laughs> I think right. should be the next right. day. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What should we take note of if you want to use put warren for hedging purpose? Put warren for hedging purposes. Uh, uh, of course, you need to uh, consider if that is a good hedge. Okay. So for what, I, what I'm trying to say that is sometimes there will, will be a basis risk. If your if your hedge is is not matching your the things that you want to cover, so it's just say if you want to say uh, buy a put warrant on KLCI to hedge for a certain portfolio of Malaysian shares that you have, you need to first determine how much relationship uh, of your portfolio of these Malaysian shares as compared to the KLCI index. So if there's there is a difference in terms of basis, then your risk of mismatching in terms of hedging will be there. Okay. Now, uh, the next question, is it possible to sell warrants? Like in the US market, we can sell and buy. Oh, I see. Uh, no, so in Malaysia, it's, it's only for buying. Uh, for, for retail, it's just only uh, one-sided buying. They can't really sell. I mean, they can't really issue warrants. I think that's, warrants. that's the question, yeah. Uh, I think warrants. that's the question, yeah. They want to, they want to, to write warrants, yeah. Unless you become investment banks. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you can't issue yeah, yeah. So, okay, what is your uh, minimum 
what's the recommended minimum investment outlay you want to like invest into one warrant? Oh, I think I can't really uh, recommend this because it really depends on your your risk appetite. I think it really uh, is very different from one to another. So can you tell us what what actually, what do you actually mean by strike price and what do you actually mean by exercise price? Okay, so the uh, strike price and exercise price is actually the similar thing. It's actually a similar thing. Okay, uh, both are actually just uh, uh, both is actually to tell you that at the end of maturity, that is the trigger point to see that whether I get something back. Okay, and that of course that will play a part in determining your warren behavior and character also as i mentioned in and all, but all those will be categorized under the set mm, okay so why are there warrants with the code p uh? p uh is actually not warrants oh, not warrants they are actually preference shares just for you to yeah so if you see something dash p a these are preference shares. These are preference shares. Not These warrants. are warrants. Yeah, not warrants. So These careful. are not put warrants. Yeah. <laughs> not put warrants. put warrants start with H, okay? Correct. Okay, right. uh, so P is preference shares, okay? They are actually shares. How do we calculate effective gearing? So that's the next question. Ah, okay. Uh, okay, so generally, all these calculation of uh, warrant pricing and, and all these uh, uh, terms are actually done via a uh, financial calculator. But if you want to break down into, uh, the formula for effective gearing, it's actually the gearing of the warren multiplied by the delta of the uh, warren, which I did not cover here, but it's something uh, that you can actually read about. Read up on delta multiplied by gearing, and that you will get your effective gearing. Okay, so how is effective gearing and gearing different? <coughs> Excuse me. So gearing is actually a very uh, simple kind of calculation. It's just that your warren price compares to your uh, share price. How many times cheaper than the share price? That is just your gearing. So say if the share price is 10 ringgit, the, this one option price is 1 ringgit, your gearing is actually 10 times. So you take the uh, share price divided by the warrant price. Correct. And maybe times the conversion. Yes, Correct. he's yeah. right. Then you will get your uh, gearing ready. So, so if your share price is 5, uh, the, uh, and the warrant price, let's say, is uh, 20 cent, and then the warrants is five of uh, conversion is five to one. So you take 20 cent times five, you get one ringgit, and then you take five ringgit of the mother share divided by one ringgit worth of warrants. Uh, warrants yes. which is five, 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 times. five times. And then that's yeah. our gearing. That's gearing. Okay, effective gearing, you use delta, yeah, which is delta. a Greek, Greek symbol, Greek symbol. <laughs> which is harder to understand. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so the next question is what is implied? volatility and how we can use it in trading warrants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, to make it simple for you to understand, the implied volatility is just like your PE in shares. If you trade shares, you may come across these terms called uh, the, the PE ratio. So which they tell you basically on how expensive or cheap uh, this instrument is. Com so you use it to compare with your peers. So for warrants, it's the same. Every uh, every uh, warrant with the same underlying has their own uh, implied volatility. So the lower the implied vol, whether it's a call or put, the cheaper the warrant is. So the higher the implied vol, the more expensive this warrant is as compared to the others. Yeah. Okay. Right. Very simple. Like, like you know, card. warrants are like uh, I mean, warrants are like options are like insurance. So the higher the risk, the more expensive is the insurance. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's correct. So now the next question is. A per, let's say if I buy company warrants, can I attend AGM? If you buy company warrants, uh, can I attend AGM? <laughs> this one, I think I think for AGM not yet. Cannot, 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 cannot. I think the answer it's for shares is, only. Shares. Yeah, correct. The answer is you yeah. cannot attend uh, a company AGM if you only buy company warrants. Okay, mm -hmm. you need to buy the mother. But you holding the sh mother shares. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the next question: If the sensitivity is high, sensitivity of the warrants is high. Should I just consider buying the mother share? Why I need to buy warrants? So that's the question. I see. So despite the sensitivity, even if you buy a, a warrant that is very high, uh, 
in terms of sensitivity, there will be still some form of uh, effective curing there, though less lesser, but there will be still some form of uh, effective curing. So it, it still allows you to leverage uh, in a sense. Mm. So if of course, if you don't want to leverage, you want to uh, go straight or outright purchase the mothership, then also it's up to you. Mm. Okay. Can you explain more about uh, intrinsic value calculation at the settlement time? Uh, okay. So uh, as I said, we focus more on core runs here. Yeah. So as long as your share price is above the strike price, there will be an intrinsic value. Okay. But uh, towards the end of the maturity of the warrants, this uh, share price is actually called, uh, we use this thing called the settlement price, which is actually the uh, averages of of the uh, closing for usually five days. Typically, uh, issuers use that. Huh? Five days average of the closing price for the share, that will be your uh, share price used to uh, calculate between the differences between the settlement price uh, and the strike price. To determine the intrinsic value. Mm, okay. The next question is, uh, is warrant as volatile as in the currency market? Currency market. Um, I'm not an expert in the currency market, but uh, through 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 friends, yeah, through friends who trade the forex market, I think. On average, the volatility of uh, or, or, or to most of the pairs are only within six percent to I don't know eight percent probably. That's the volatility of of uh, of your forex. But as compared to warrants of shares, you you see thirty percent, forty percent, fifty percent, sixty percent. It's actually very volatile. Mm, okay. So the next question is: How do we identify whether the warrants is Sharia compliant or not? Ah. Okay, so uh, because warrants are derivative, uh, so they are not Sharia compliant. Okay. Okay. All right. Next question is: Can you explain about premium percentage? Okay, premium. Okay, uh, premium. I. Okay, so basically, premium percentage. Yeah, it's. Actually, in a more layman term, it's actually if you purchase the warrant now, this percentage actually tells you how much more the share price must move uh, and end at maturity before you can break even. That is actually uh, what the premium percentage tells you. So like the if the premium percentage is 10%, the warrant must move 10%. The share price, the mother share must move uh, 10% before you can actually break even. Mm. That is actually uh, premium. Okay, let, let me give you a scenario. Uh, I just thought of it. Okay. Uh, will, will I, <laughs> if I come across a warrant where I, uh, uh, if I, let's say, uh, the, the, it's in the money warrant, let's say the, the, the share price, underlying share price is 5 ringgit, the exercise price is 450, the okay. warrant sell for 40 cents. The warrant sell for discount. Yeah, so it's, it's not it's no premium. premium. It's no premium. <laughs> no premium. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. will, will that happen in Malaysia? In Malaysia, yes, it happens. It happens. Really? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes there's it arbitrage, right? So some some uh, some investors will think that that is very attractive because it's actually below the intrinsic value. There's no premium to it. It's actually trading at discount. But still, bear in mind if you buy the warrant uh, at discount, it can be even you, know, you will see even further discount. <laughs> that is the potential risk that you are facing. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I don't really get it because you see, it is trading at discount, right? I can immediately sell my mother share at five ringgit per share, mm -hmm. and then let's say commotion is one to one, uh, I sell five ringgit per share and buy the warrants mm -hmm. at forty cent, and then exercise it to buy the stock at four fifty. <laughs> I, I make ten cent, right? I mean, it's a risk free because trade because there's right? no commotion to share. So for structural warrants, there's no commotion to mother share. So you can't really arbitrage using that, that, that method. Yeah, but, but company warrants, it can happen. Uh, company warrants, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. It can happen, yeah. okay, since you touched about premium, <laughs> uh, I asked about discount. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Uh, is it positive to have, uh, so is it possible to have negative effective gearing? Uh, 
No, because uh, effective drink is actually the same for even call or put ones. Don't have a negative uh, effective drink. It's always positive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is uh, using technical analysis useful in trading warrants or fundamental analysis? Uh, base okay so based on my experience you I, I don't know how but you can't really uh, chart on on warrants because as i said warrants pricing are, are always uh, the is determined by the uh, market maker of the fair price right so the it's not really by demand and supply or volume as per se so uh, always if you want to chart if you want to do any study fundamental that will be on the mother share and then you choose a warrant to actually leverage on it that's how you mm -hmm. go about it. Okay. So right now, let's say uh, I want to buy Supermax. And there's so many Supermax uh, warrants out there. So the question is, how do we know which warrant to go for? So uh, I would say you have to first choose, or uh, typically some people have their favorite issuers. They, they are used to, let's say, if they're used to, they say RHB, per se. Eh? So uh, from RHB, they can find out really uh, uh, what are the warrants uh, on Supermax that is listed by RHB and then within the few that RHB has to offer then you can choose in terms of effective gary, in terms of your time value, in terms of your sensitivity like I mentioned earlier on, your SET. Mm, okay, and uh, uh, if I may add, add, add to that is that you may actually use warrant screener. Okay, you can make, go to a I think KLSE has a warrant screener. Busa Marketplace has a warrant screener. You can use the warrant screener to find the, to find the underlying, let's say, Supermax. You just write Supermax, and then you screen all the uh, warrants available on Supermax, and then you'll see if you are the one, that one longer time to maturity, you just strike out those that are uh, closer to the expiry date. And then if you're the one that like higher effective gearing, then you go for the one that have high effective gearing. So you just need to find a screener. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, then you just change. list out the warrants available on the screen. Just try out those that don't fulfill the criteria. And then maybe you see uh, which warrant is, has a higher co conversion premium. Then maybe those that have 20% conversion premium, you, you, you don't really want it, yeah. then you just try it out. Okay. So so, it's, so it all, ultimately, it all depends on you. Like, from, from what I'm saying is that you, you need to see whether are you able to take up so much risk. Then if you're able to take so much risk, you go for higher uh, effective gearing. Higher effective gearing, correct. Yeah. So if you can't take so much risk, then you go for low effective. But uh, but uh, uh, but for in terms of time value, basically we all want a, a longer time value. Uh, nobody wants a shorter time value kind of. Some people go for really? shorter time value because the shorter time value, uh, your effective gearing is higher. Ah, I see. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm wrong on that. I'm wrong on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> some, some, some people actually prefer that. that you can't say for sure. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, so that's another way la, for you to, to, fi to find out which warrant is suitable for you because, you know, I know some C60. <laughs> yeah. A lot of uh, warrants on the market, la, traded on the market. Yeah. All right. So uh, let us do maybe uh, one last question. Let me see, uh, there's still so many questions on the board. Okay. Uh, if I. Uh, okay. Let me see. Uh, can an issuer manipulate the share price? Can the issuer, can, do the issuer have the capability? Maybe, maybe can. Uh, this sorry, the price. This price is share price or warrant price here. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think what it means uh, is warrant price. Warrant price. Yeah. Uh, I think most issuer uh, uh, wouldn't do that. Okay. So you, if you ask if they have the capability, I think maybe yes, because they, uh, at the end of the day, they are the one who provide the prices. But will they do that? Uh, I think no issuers will want to do that because SC and Busa actually uh, monitors uh, the issuers very tightly and very stringently. Okay, so if I buy a company warren, will I enjoy a dividend as per issued to the shareholder? If I buy, uh, uh, no. So if you buy warrants, you will not enjoy the dividends uh, from from the shares. So what happened is that 
when you buy the warrants, all these dividends or from the uh, mother share has been priced into the warrant uh, itself. Mm. Okay, so now the, let's let's do the last question. So how can retail investor win in the stock market if issuer and the market maker are the same entity? I think the I think he's I mentioned I think he's thinking that um, the issuer always trades again the uh, investors. So that is not the case. So in, in the best case scenario, if the share markets go up uh, goes up, both can be uh, both both can be winning from this kind of uh, uh, of scenario. So if you bought a call warrant, if share price went up, you made from the call warrant, and for the issuer, uh, they would have already covered their risk of selling this call warrant by buying the mother share. So they would have also made from the mother share if the share price has uh, appreciated in the bullish market. Mm, okay, so that could be win-win also. Uh, win -win. Not only you are, uh, as a market maker, you are uh, always on the opposite directions. Uh. Alright, so with that, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in uh, today and thank you so much uh, Kenneth. Thank you Shane for thank joining you, Shane. me. To, for this live broadcast of this uh, webinar. I hope that you have learned as much as me in this uh, Going Tactical with Warrants webinar. I hope to see you all again in our next webinar. All right, have a pleasant rest of the day. Have bye a good bye. evening. Bye. Bye bye.